Um, Hello and welcome to Garrity Talks. My name is Lucia and I am the co-founder of Garrity Awards. Just like the award show, the Garrity Talks series puts some of the marketing and creative industries to change makers in the spotlight. Today we have a very special guest from Armenia, Shushan Harutunian, who is the Chief Communications Officer of Galaxy Group of Companies, a high-impact conglomerate that manages 15 companies in Armenia, Georgia, and Belarus. Shushan leads the communications and reputation management of the group, supporting and controlling content, data, and markets, as well as boosting sustainable projects for the well-being of the community. Welcome, Shushan, and thanks for joining us today in this Garrity Talk. It's a pleasure to participate in these talks. Thank you, Lucia. So as I mentioned before, you are the Chief Communications Officer of Galaxy Group of Companies, a high impact conglomerate that manages 15 companies in Armenia, Georgia, and Belarus. So can you tell us more about your role and the company? Well, the company is a well-established multi-industry corporation uh, that uh, is rocking the world and driving industries in Eastern Europe. Uh, what is so unique about Galaxy is that uh, in all, all of the cases, all of the companies have been founded by Galaxy from ground up, from brand identity to successful operations, um, from IT, telecommunication to hospitality and retail, uh, all the companies have a game-changing solution that they have been offering to a very competitive uh, industries. And maybe this is something unique and different about Galaxy. Uh, of course, uh, on the other hand, we, we look at Galaxy as a private company, which has a very structure like corporate governance and high standards of transparency reporting, which is kind of unusual for private companies in this part of the world. But lastly, and what is more important is that Galaxy is sustainable, devotes a significant resources to innovation and continuous learning. It is a taxpayer, it is a top employer, and most importantly, Galaxy uh, is a community of people who are united for a mission to improve lives and communities around them. So for you to understand, we're not promising uh, to bring stars to, to <laughs> the earth, but rather to deliver good services and products for the well-being of people. Uh, and for a meaningful communication uh, all around. Um, about my role at the company, I shall say yes. that it's quite a, a very modest one. It's about driving conversations along in the disciplines, uh, companies and stakeholder groups. But um, professionally speaking, it involves corporate affairs, marketing communications, media relations, government relations, data and content, uh, and, and uh, creative work among others. So my mission is some sort of assistance to my fellow colleagues in Galaxy companies uh, for involve, evolving and, and, and finding new opportunities and being strategic and, and of course being measurable at the same time. I wouldn't say that's modest. You do a lot of things, actually. <laughs> what is the most challenging of it? Okay. Um, I believe that, um, well, it, it's more of a humanly challenge, I may say, um, because uh, our team is on duty all the time, which, which means like day and night, <laughs> weekends and weekdays too. Um, because when you are committed and you gave commitments to people that you would be there to support, this promise actually has a cost. Um, mm. So for you to understand, I've been in Galaxy in, in, as, as a senior team member for already four years, and I can't recall a, a weekend uh, which wouldn't involve any work-related call. So initially, at first, it was like hell difficult. But then with time, I learned that it's okay to be corporate doctors, and it's actually good to drive this ambulance car <laughs> for having <laughs> supporting. <laughs> And uh, talking about leadership, how do you encourage the people you work with you to give their creative best? What tips do you use? I see. Um, I believe that there is this misconception that creative work is all about geniuses and suddenly out of brainstorming or out of geniuses, we just arrive. But uh, creative work is also hard work. So myself and I, we are believers of hard work. So instead of waiting for the creative genius to arrive, mm -hmm. I'd rather to drop down it to, to a project milestones 
and to work together with our teams to, to make it happen. And, and of course, the classics of, of the management school are applicable here too. Appraisal, credits, appreciation, motivation, you name it. Um, you go the way, you show the way, you give comfort to people. Um, and, and this is what it is about. Okay. And uh, your portfolio includes rebranding of more than 30 companies, campaigns for public reforms, winning elections, lobbying for public policy change in the EU territory. What do these roles have in common and what is different about them? Because I can imagine rebranding, how does it compare to campaigning for public reforms or winning elections, which are things that look like apparently to be very different? Um, well, they may look different uh, on, on first side, but if you look at the core of, of all of these actions, they all involve trust. And, and actually we live in a society which is based on social contract. So it based on imagination, and most importantly, it is based on trust. Just, just to give you an example, uh, you give away all of your earnings to an institution which is called bank, and you go home and you sleep. Isn't that mm. strange to you? I mean, explain <laughs> this to, to another species. Or for example, you believe that a piece of paper, which is man money, uh, has a value full of basket a food at the supermarket. So we humans are social species. Therefore, trust and reputation can be engineered, built and maintained. From campaigns and lobbying to rebranding and policy change, they all have trust in common. Mm. Uh, but if you would look uh, um, or have a deeper insight, uh, it's more about uh, trust that changes are happening for good because whether you want it or not, we all will be aging and dying at some point. Change is eventuality, but progress is what matters. And if you could put the change or, uh, into a progress, and if this progress is meaningful something, then this is what unites all, all the campaigns and all the things that involve people, social engineering and trust. Uh, if I was able to explain it as much, well, humanly as possible. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, that's good. And uh, Galaxy Group of Companies won last year the Crisis Management of the Year at the Armenian PR Awards. What is the key to do a successful crisis management? Personally, yeah. for me, it looks like something really hard to do. <laughs> yeah, it is. But on the other hand, maybe there is this, uh, if you would look again from the humanly perspective, um, being, being as open and transparent and being human on a digital age is what matters. And, and, and for the crisis period, actually, we owe our success to our founder and chairman, chairman uh, Gurgen Khachatjan, who opened up the door for honest conversations with all our stakeholders. And as he put this highest bar, we were as open and transparent on, on the process as possible. We were doing our best to solve the problem, but we weren't thinking to find a very good branded or packaged solutions. We were just telling what we have and people quite strangely understood and accepted it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think communications nowadays is not about gatekeeping, but rather gate watching. Uh, if you can be humanly, if you can be open and transparent at your lowest point, uh, people are quite strangely, maybe for some, some you know, perspectives to look at, are really open to accept it and, and rather than to judge it. So openness and humanly uh, component of crisis communications is what uh, I, I believe is working well. And we have, of course, a case to support it. Okay. And talking about other things, your country has been going through hard times when not only COVID, but war and political instability has put businesses in an uncomfortable situation. What was the survival tactics and what kind of lessons can be learned from this? Well, the lesson is most probably the, the aspect of corporate citizenships that we should bring, bring to the agenda and discuss this as intensively as possible. Because um, if you would look at the situation, businesses can't operate in parallel reality. Uh, if there is a concern that your stakeholders, that your customers are facing, you have to face it too. Otherwise, uh, you, you will be just out of the game, whether this is pandemic, whether this is war, or whether this is even a social concern. If you, you will look at different corners of the world, from Black Lives Matter to any other uh, social cases that are happening, if businesses are not reflecting 
the concerns of their customers. People are not willing to continue the conversation. Uh, therefore, corporate citizenship is, is, is the new direction. And businesses, of course, except for their corporate uh, responsibilities, have, uh, have or should have their participation too in all the areas that their customers have concerns. And, and if we would look at the recent publication of Edelman Trust, if, if you have noticed, for the first time in the history, in the past two years, businesses are more trusted than governmental institutions, which means mm. like the, the Citizenship Institute is declining. People expected and hoped that the government will be solving their problems, whether this is COVID or war, but the government didn't address the, 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 uh, all the concerns. In the meantime, because businesses are always adaptable and are always fast, uh, businesses started to take care of their people and their communities. This is why uh, the, the trust in businesses is, is, is growing. And at the meantime, the responsibility of businesses is growing. So definitely trust is part of the combo that we have to, <laughs> to pay attention yeah. to. Definitely. And uh, you are the author of Nobody Steals It From You, You Give It For Free, which is a book about data and privacy. Can you tell us about it? Well, actually, this is this is quite an interesting story behind the book, because uh, because first of all, it was part of my research at the Central European University and, and an amazing professor, Judith Sandor, she, she backed me up like 10 years ago uh, to and supported to write a an interdisciplinary thesis, uh, which was uh, both on legal and gender departments, and which was something uh, of a strange meaning at that time. Uh, and a German publication, Lambert publication, uh, backed it up also, the, 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 the publishing it. They considered it interesting. What was interesting so about the book, I just want you to step back and to look at things like from a perspective of, of how the world looked like 10 years ago. So imagine somebody coming out and claiming that uh, we actually do not have a privacy concern on a societal level. Uh, we are just faking it because people are voluntarily giving their privacy. And in order to support this claim, uh, I, I explained it that it comes uh, because people are receiving a people are receiving social benefits in return. And, and, and actually to support again this claim, I had to check the, to, to bring examples from the history of humanity, discussing the notion of personality. How was the person born? So how the first, the first profile picture was born, the identity written in, in, in the first sort of, sort of passports. And at the meantime, how the need for privacy was born. So you can imagine that at one point in the time of history, people were not, we were do, doing their private businesses along with all the territories. So imagine mm. somebody is eating, the other one is, is taking care of you know, natural <laughs> needs and so on. How people came to the idea of having a privacy, both highlighted and both, uh, both uh, illustrated in public spaces, private spaces, and then arranged and written uh, in a form of law and rights. So, and I explained that people need privacy for the same reason they are giving away their privacy right now, because people needed a private space to create their personality so that they will come out to publicly and exhibit it, it for in return of social benefits, which is a recognition, so many other things, you name it. And for the same reason, they are giving away their privacy because they can have it on screens. They can broadcast their bedrooms and gain a recognition and social acceptance. This is why the notion of privacy is dying. It is transforming and changing. But on the other hand, I am telling that uh, this is something that maybe needs further recognition and discussion, that privacy is very much interlinked with basic human rights of dignity. So what kind of people and what kind of humanity we are when we don't have a dignity or the notion of dignity is died? We can see in COVID times that people are easily giving away their privacy mm -hmm. for the sake of security, for the sake of staying alive. And which means like we are a, a, a society which has no dignity that what are the new values that, that should be in the core of social contra contract if this is not dignity? Um, I don't have answer to this question, but I believe that starting from 10 years ago, back to now, this is something that needs to be addressed because again, change is 
uh, irrevocable. We are changing anyways, but progress is what matters because everybody believes that if there's a technology involved, it automatically improves people's life, but it's not. Mm. If we do not have a new social contract of what are we united around in a very social uh, society and with all of its social contracts, if this is not dignity, what is that then? Well, I hope that <laughs> this was interesting to discuss in this format. Okay. And on your LinkedIn profile, you say, I've been in communications for 17 years already, yet I discover and get in love with it every single day. Just My job is about those delightful moments when you're able to deliver an impact, inspire actions. So to for our last question today, what is the communication project you are most proud of? Well, um, I, I am confident that you are familiar with this notion. In communications, we always give away our ego and credits. So all the time, it was about something, some other people, some other companies, which you gave away because uh, if you want this work, you don't you you put you need to put down your ego. So if you would tell um, like what is the most efficient, what was the highest, <laughs> which was the, which was the project that has the highest impact, I would easily answer. It. But uh, but uh, for for a project that I'm very much proud, um, I can tell that like it's been a while that I'm in the industry. Um, it's been a lot that uh, myself and our teams were carrying out and all of them were perfect in the terms that they were addressing a problem. They were addressing and bringing a solution. I mean, not just out of curiosity for beauty or something, but because they were there to, to address something and all of them were good enough, I believe, for their terms. But maybe I can share with you uh, one of our recent projects that we, we conducted with our team at Galaxy. And actually we are very happy, contented and proud about it. So we wanted to uh, express our gratitude and appreciation to our stakeholders and to our employees for staying strong and committed in this very hard and challenging times that uh, we were passing through. Um, so we partnered with State uh, Symphony Orchestra for Armenia and, and created a social a special program uh, of, of bringing all the best uh, rock uh, songs of all time and adapting it for the classical orchestra. So invite, we invited them to the opera house. So you can imagine with all of its nice. beauty. And, and then, uh, so for, for you to understand, a Rammstein or Metallica was playing uh, <laughs> in a classical mode and, and, and people were delighted. And it was such a brilliant moment for all of us to be united in one opera house, all of the partners and employees. So you can imagine it's quite huge feeling. And then the special closed program play, playing for them and, and with a small highlight that we are happy to be united and we are happy to be together and to share both hard times and good times together. So. Great. Well, thank you so much for telling, me, telling us about uh, your job and, and your career and sharing this moment with us at the Security Talk and uh, all the best for all the projects and everything you, you do this year as well. Thank you very much. And thank you for the great job that you guys are doing at Get Awards. And I'm really, really looking forward to the process and to have my mother's contribution in, in all of the processes and for the awards this year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.